Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. <laughs> well, hi everybody, welcome back to Photoshop User TV, the show where Dave Cross reads a magazine. This one right here. What magazine is that, Dave? That's Photoshop User Magazine, the fine people that bring this show right here. Right to now. The, now, at this moment. <laughs> We're supposed to have a word of the day, Dave, and we forgot. I know. So what could our, quick, think of a word. Fortuitous. Welcome to another fortuitous show of Photoshop User TV. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Mac Laskowski. I'm joined here with Mr. Dave Cross. Hello. And over on my right hand side, but you can't really tell it's my right hand side, is Corey Barker. Hello. With the magic <laughs> pen, no one's gonna look I, at I it. How's it my, going, Corey? I wave my pen. Hello. There it goes. There, there it is. is. Hello. It's like, like it's magic. It's mm. like it's pain. His and magic. over on my left, which also happens to be Dave's left today. That's very, that's very fortuitous that it, Isn't it? happened to be oh. left. Hey it's guys, how's it going? Left sides. Mm -hmm. Otherwise but who it would am be I? weird. Pete Collins. That's right. Pete, that's you look bright today. Day. I am bright today. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the extra bright light on me today. I was gonna say, you got some serious. <laughs> How are things in the weather center today, Pete? Well, it's sunny in this area right here. <laughs> it might be a little dark and cloudy back here, but otherwise, you know, we're doing okay. <laughs> it has right. been the same conditions on that screen for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so uh, I feel like I haven't been on this show in a long time. I don't know when the last time I was on was, but I, I, I feel know. like it's, it's, it's been, been a long time a, since I've been long. sitting here. So anyway, uh, lots of good stuff. Uh, first, photo walk, worldwide photo walk yes. coming up this Saturday. So it is not too late to, it is too late to start a photo walk, but it's not too late to join in on a photo walk. So you can do that. Uh, just go to mm -hmm. worldwidephotowalk.com. Uh, we have a special Peach Pit ebook of the day. They're like running a little special mm -hmm. for, for our shows. So nice. you get like a special ebook discount. This one is from Vincent Versace oh, from Oz to Kansas. And you can buy it for only $26.99. That's 40% off. Nice. And um, I don't know what the code is. I don't know if there is a code. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently the code is Matt Quick Tip. <laughs> That would work. So, you are not worthy of the code. <laughs> so I guess there is no code. So, uh, but it's peachpit.com, and uh, I'm sure you can find everything you need over there. So, uh, oh, wait, it's moving. Okay. <laughs> so I guess I'm supposed to start with a quick tip. Dave, throw it to me for a okay, quick tip. Okay, I think, uh, first of all, before we do anything else, Matt's got a quick tip. Oh, good. All right, so I'm going to do a very quick Lightroom tip. And this is something, this is something that I actually used uh, last week. I was traveling. Uh, I, went to, I went to photograph in uh, you know, Jackson Hole, Grand Teton National Park. And one of the things I do is, and, and one of the things I noticed everybody does, which is why, uh, why I'm doing a tip of this, is bracket. Mm -hmm. It seems like everybody nowadays um, has their camera set onto some bracket mode. Right. And it, it differs for Canons and Nikon, so this tip will either be totally useless to you because your camera will immediately <laughs> give you the number of photos that you need, or this tip will be very useful to you because I'm a Nikon shooter. I can't, I have to shoot either three, five, seven, or nine, same with you, mm -hmm. photos if we want a bracket. Right. So let's say we want two stops different so we want like our base exposure and we want plus two and minus two well uh, uh, nikons we have to change it to a five shot bracket because we can't control that spacing mm -hmm. in between so what happens here is is i don't usually care about the the plus one and the minus one and you end up with this huge library of photos i was shooting with a d800 which meant i ended mm, up with a really big larger <laughs> library of photos so here, here's the trick you can move your thumbnail slider in lightroom to to show you different uh, thumbnail sizes here, which uh, I mean, obvious, right? So, what you can do is, for me, I'm shooting a five-shot bracket, so I know that you know here's here's one, two, three, four, five, and then I know it resets on mm. the next row here. So that's how I set my thumbnails up. Right. And then what I can do is I can go and I can go to the middle ones, just like that. Mm. Just hold down your Command key on the Mac, Control key on the PC, go to the middle ones, and just select them all and hit the Delete key and they're gone. So just that's a cool quick, idea. simple tip. But it yep. is a, everybody that I was mm -hmm. around has their, their remote cable, and all I hear is 
right. you know, you just hear five, seven, nine mm -hmm. shots going off for every single photo. So they're going to end up with the same thing. They're going to end up with a, a bunch of stuff probably in between. Right. And in each case, you don't want them. Yeah. So that's a good idea. And me personally, I, I don't even know that I, I don't necessarily always use the HDR. It's not like I'm going to merge every single mm -hmm. one of these to HDR. But to me, creatively, it helps me when I'm there. It helps me figure out. Just, just to be creative with the scene. I don't mm -hmm. have to think about the exposure because I know I'm bracketing. I know I got the exposure. I can move around and really concentrate right. on the composition and everything. Cool. So there there's is. a little tip for you. Oh, can I throw in a tip on a tip? Of course. Another thing you could do, because this is obviously limited by, you know, you clicking on all these. You could always go to your little paint can here and you could paint on, let's say, a flag. And on that flag, you could paint on rejected and you can just go straight down the line. So I just click mm -hmm. here and just keep going straight down the line and just paint them and then head up here to the photo menu and choose delete rejected photos when I'm done. There you go. It's like a tip inside it's, of it. Too. It's a double tip. All right, Corey Barker. I, I don't have Lightroom. All right. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say you had to do a Lightroom tip too, though. No, I you, don't have a Lightroom. That's really good. I think, I think, I think, I think you, I think you kind of know Photoshop to where you could do a pretty decent Photoshop. Actually, I read up this morning and studied, and I actually have something prepared today. Did you get my book? Y yes. Okay. Because <laughs> I it, have some thoughts on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a critique. I have a critique. No. That cover. No. I voted on a different cover, by the way. You remember that, right? Yeah, you voted yeah. on the basketball player, right? Yeah, the basketball player. I really like that one. Yeah. But the other I, one you know, I did too. I voted it. So if he's talking about my, my Photoshop compositing book, and I sent, I sent cover examples out to everybody uh, for what was going to make the cover. And Corey and I actually voted on the same, the same cover that did not make it because everybody else voted on something else. We got outnumbered. All right. But I actually got something really cool. Um, I was watching the game last night, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm, who's a big fan of commercials when the football games are on? Because there was this car, car ad, it was Lexus, and it was, I know you've probably seen this, where it's got this split world, where it's got like a reflection, mm -hmm. and you see the split of the car and everything like that. No, I fast forward it through the car. No, well, normally, <laughs> but even still, you might catch a glimpse of it. But anyway, um, I was thinking, you know what, well, that can't be that hard in Photoshop to mess around with, uh, both for a still shot or video. So actually, as I started playing around with it, I started playing around with it more. I did it to like a couple dozen photos last night and it got something interesting every time. So it's really easy to do. All you gotta do is like take an image like this and I'm just gonna go make a duplicate of the background layer. And I'm gonna bring up my rulers and since I've got snap on, I'm just gonna bring a guide, a horizontal guide down until it snaps in the center. We'll do that right there. Then I'm going to flip this image vertically. So you got one layer is upright and the other layer below it is, or the, this layer is turned over and the other layer below it is upright. I'm going to take the rectangular marquee tool and draw a selection over the bottom until it snaps to the edge of that guide and then go and activate a layer mask. And look how cool it's turned this kind of reflected horizon mm -hmm. in no time at all. And of course if you want to adjust it, and then, you know when I did this I was like wow that's kind of cool, but go over here and unlock because the layer mask is linked to the layer automatically, or by default. So just go in here and click on this little chain link and unlock it, and it allows you to move them independently of the mask. So if I wanted to nudge it up a little bit and unlock this background layer and see more of the sky. Oh, wow, dude, that's like the lake that New York City's on. <laughs> So it's kind of like the city underwater. So. <laughs> but then, you know, I mean, just so you can see, it's kind of things you can play with, like this one, which I had this stock image, and to this day, I've never had a use for it until now. But it was kind of cool. So I did the same thing. I just made a duplicate layer, go to edit, transform, flip vertical, we'll bring our guide down, make it a selection of the bottom, same thing, and then let's do this. And then I thought, all right, well, it looks cool that way. What if you just press Command or Control I on the mask and invert it? Ah. And you could flip it the other direction and get something totally interesting there. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. But then, why stop there? We're getting to see the mind of Corey as it works <laughs> through an image. So as I thought, okay, well, let's hold down the Option key and go and create a merged copy of this layer and then flip it horizontally. And oh, no, we'll you didn't. Not a blending mode. And we'll bring out a vertical guide this time and put the mask on this side. Oh, no, you and, didn't. And, oh. <laughs> or if you invert cool. it. So that's where oh, I, I like got that to that. One. <laughs> so I got to that and I actually like, well, I thought that was really cool. See how the, even these 
lines seem to fuse all together and it all just kind of creates this really cool kind of, because it could be a background gra graphic element or a tiling for a background pattern or something like that. Yeah. All created from that car. But one last thing, because it was inspired by a video. Dun, so, dun, dun. So we have video in front of So I have a clip here. If I just drag us through it, it's just a skateboarder jumping in the air. Seems like a perfect candidate for this. Same process, but with a video clip, you're gonna wanna convert it to a smart object first. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert it. Then we'll create that duplicate layer. Oop, get it outside of the video group. These video groups are so confusing sometimes. Yeah, they do get kind of. Okay, so I got my duplicate and transform, flip vertical. And once again, we'll bring out the same guy. It's the same process every time, no matter if it's video or still images. It's too bad I put it wasn't some function in Photoshop where it just automates that kind of repetitive process. Probably could create an action, <laughs> of, you know, at least through. <laughs> That's crazy talk, Dave. But now, in theory, we should have something pretty cool. So if I press play, and he just jumps out of the mirrored image. <laughs> That's kind of neat. And falls yeah, that's, back into it. That's, that's cool. pretty cool. Isn't that really cool? <laughs> yeah. So you, I mean, a lot of fun you can have with just, uh, with not just with staff video, but static images too. Create an interesting design on In fact, let me show you real quick. I know I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so earlier this morning I came in, I was playing around with some more. I took that same picture of the car and actually created this kind of alien face. Can you see this on my screen here? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That was from one another car image I had. I flipped it and did all kinds of cool things to it. It kind of looks, like, looks like Pete. <laughs> Pete just slapped it and flipped it. Right I was down. thinking it looked like one of the aliens from uh, Fifth Element, but you know, and that's where I, that's where I started to go crazy and had to come here and here on set. So that was <laughs> I think we need to come up with a new rating scale of Corey tutorials on how much time we could just lose playing around with some of those cool <laughs> things because that looks really interesting. Yeah. I could see an hour later just going, oh, wait. Like I, I said last night, work. after I saw that and played around with it, it was an hour later. I'm like still <laughs> goofing around with it. I'm like, you know, that's just really cool. It's just, it's just fun when you can find something you can you, you want to try it on every image mm -hmm. like we did with Refine Edge when it came out. Well, and the thing is, if you get a cool pattern like that, you can make it a, a, a seamless pattern because you flipped it so that everything is symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll line yeah. up. Absolutely. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with nice. this. Crazy. So, so I got to tell you, our uh, our contest for today. I'm going to reveal the contest prize. It is it is a book. This is the book that I learned Illustrator from. I am. Yeah, this is like <laughs> from from way back. This is the Illustrator. It's the Illustrator CS6 Wow book. Uh, Sharon Stoyer. I say you how you pronounce Sharon her last name. I saw, actually saw her speak one time, way 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 back. But this is the book that I learned I learned <laughs> Illustrator from. I don't. I forget what version it was, but uh, but I love this book. I, I always loved the the, mm -hmm. the Wow series of books, but this was always one of my favorites. So anyway, that's going to be our prize today. Dave, what do we have? We have a. Uh, I think it's uh, time for a break. By the looks Dave of says it's time for a break, so let's take a break. Let's do it. Bye. We are back. Matt's busy I'm getting reading all the Illustrator books. Here. He's like, I remember those days when I first learned Illustrator in this book. Seriously, I haven't, op <laughs> I haven't opened up Illustrator in, in years. I used to love this program. Mm -hmm. So so little known fact, Illustrator, I was just saying now on the break, Illustration is actually like my favorite type of, of art. It's like the, the thing like I wish I could do. Mm -hmm. I could do it, and I, I guess if I sat down, I don't devote any time to it, but it's like I, I look at cool illustrations, and it's like that's the thing I sit back. I'm like, man, I wish I could do that and draw that. But Yeah, no, it's, uh, I have the utmost respect for it, but it's one thing to take a great photograph, another thing to start with a blank piece of 
canvas in Illustrator and generate something from scratch that yeah. looks and amazing. And these two guys sitting on our outside, yeah, they, they can they can freaking draw that <laughs> crazy stuff all day long. But anyway. Our problem is reining it in. Mm -hmm. Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dave, you got a uh, you got a tutorial for us? I just today? got a, a quick kind of a, a tip tutorial thing, and it's it's I think it's important because it's changed the rules of Photoshop a little bit. I've for a year long as I can remember, I always tell people make sure you go check the settings for the tool because once you've used the tool, you can't change the settings anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's now a couple of tools in Photoshop CS6 where that's different, and it's important to know because it really changes the way this this whole function works. So I'm going to use the content uh, where move tool, but the same theory applies to the new option for the patch tool. So right now, up in the options bar, I've got the mode set on move. Adaptation is a menu that gives you various choices. Right now, it's just set on medium, and it's set on sample all layers, which is Adobe for put the results on the blank layer you have previously created. So I'm going to just make a quick rough selection as a fly flies around my face, which is an interesting <laughs> distraction. And I move it over and say, this is where I want these people to be in this new position, and the Content Aware Move tool will attempt to not only move them, but also fill in the area where they used to be. And it's not bad. Now, in most tools, you'd have to kind of stop there. If you didn't like it, undo and start again. But as long as you don't do anything else, this adaptation menu is live. So you can actually try and say, well, what does it look like if I change it to very loose? And it redraws everything and you go, okay, definitely not very loose. That doesn't look good. How about very strict? So rather than having to pick a setting every time, generally I usually keep it on medium to start with and then we'll try it depending on the situation. Depends a lot on the background and what's behind them. But just the fact that you can go in and change a setting after fact, that's kind of mm -hmm. a big thing because in the past, yep. you'd always have to go undo, undo, undo and start over start again. Over. This just lets you, as long as you don't do anything else, and again, the same theory applies if you're using the patch tool with its content aware option. It's the same menu that you can change on the fly. Very nice. Speaking of flies. <laughs> Pete Collins is up next. <laughs> That'd be Mick Fly. <laughs> <laughs> so Pete, how is I, you're feeling? You, you look very bright. Today. I am. You bright look like today. you're in a great bright mood. <laughs> I am in a bright mood. <laughs> what do you got for us? Shiny too. Well, hey, this uh, this plays off of uh, what I've <laughs> done over on the uh, okay. NAP website. So make sure. Yeah, I know I'm cool. <laughs> I'm gonna block the light right here. Uh, <laughs> I was nowhere near that person. Um, <laughs> Over on the NAP website, I've been putting up a couple tutorials talking about creating templates for collages. And uh, what I want to do was uh, share some of that here for the folks that aren't over on the NAP website. I would encourage you to go over there. We've got great stuff over there. But this is a little thing that you might not know about using Photoshop to work smarter instead of harder. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I've just created this, this canvas, and I've filled it with black, 50%, I'm sorry, filled it with 50% gray, just so you can see this. And now I create a new blank layer up top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my rulers. And if you don't have your rulers up, just hit the shortcut Command or Control R, and your rulers pop up. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to pull a guide over from my rulers and I'm going to decide I want a border of about a half an inch. And if you look at the guide, it goes all the way up to the top ruler so you can see where it's going to land. And I just let it go at about half an inch. Now, it's not absolutely crucial that it's exactly half an inch. It's whatever size you want. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my rectangular marquee tool. Make sure you've got this set for snap because that's going to help make sure that it lines up. And I'm just going to create a nice strip right down the left-hand side. Now all I'm going to want to do is fill this with white. And I can do it with a shortcut, Command-Delete. Or I could just go over here and do Shift-Delete and bring up my Fill menu. Once I get through with that, I just simply Command-D to deselect. And now I've got this nice little bar right here. I can get rid of that guy, just slide it over. And this is where everything kind of comes into play. I want to make a copy of that. So I hit Command or Control J to jump up another copy of that and slide it over to the other edge. I want one on each edge. But see, as I'm dragging along, it kind of goes up or down according to how shaky my hand is. If I hold Shift, it's going to stay constrained right on that straight line. And it's going to make sure that it lines up perfectly with the other one. Now I just bring it over and make sure it hits the edge. And I've got the two edges of my frame. 
Well, I want to divide this up into four sections for my collage. So I'm going to need a middle section. Now, normally what you'd have to do, you'd kind of have to figure out what's the, the midway point. You can use guides and stuff like this, but this way is going to give you a lot more flexibility. I am simply going to create another stripe by hitting command, not that one. I'm going to hit command or control J. And now if you look, I've got this other stripe just sitting here. I don't even have to move it. I just simply have to select all three of these stripes. And this is where Photoshop's going to do the work for you. A lot of people don't realize is if you put the move tool up there and you make a selection, you've got these distribution icons up here. Well, if I hit one of those, it's going to try to distribute them across whatever I've selected. So I need to tell Photoshop where I want them to distribute it. The easiest thing to do is just simply hit Command or Control A and it's going to select the entire canvas. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to come up here and it's the third icon from the right is going to distribute this evenly across the center. I tap on that and it immediately gives an equal proportion to each side of this. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is I can easily find out what the center point is by using that. But what if you want, say, three sections instead of two? Well, just click on one of these. I choose the middle one, Command or Control J. Now I have four stripes. You can see if I move this over, there's an extra stripe there. If I repeat this process of just selecting all four of those, Command or Control A, and come up here and say, I want those evenly spaced, now it just puts them and I've got it divided into thirds. So if you're going to need to use a template or you're going to divide stuff up, you don't actually have to figure out the math to all this. You can come in and as long as you've selected the area that you want and you've selected each layer, you can let Photoshop distribute it evenly for you. And so that's going to be a, a big time saver because if you ever try to get in here and make a lot of divisions or cells, you have to figure out all the math and all that stuff. No, Photoshop can do it like that for you. You just got to remember to use these arrangement icons up top. And so then when you get done making parts of it, here I've got a couple examples of all the different ones I have. Let me close that off. I've divided it up into, I've got horizontal lines that I can do in fourths and thirds and I can add stuff like that. But then now I bring in a picture and what I'm going to be able to do is lay the picture underneath and it creates that frame that if I needed to adjust this, let me get something that actually looks decent. Now if I wanted to adjust that picture, I just hit Command or Control T and I'm going to bring it down and fit it in that cell. And the nice thing is if the picture is a little bit too big, that frame is going to hide it nicely for me. And so you can see how you can quickly place pictures in there and have your own frame set up that you have a great little collage. And so Very nice. that's kind of it. The whole thing is, is to remember that you can use that distribution stuff up top mm -hmm. to really get it quick and, oh, yeah. and, and it makes it a lot easier. Once again, go check out, I've got more stuff on this over at uh, the NAP website. So if you're a member, please come over, photoshopuser.com, check us out. Awesome, well thank you, Mr. Pete. I said to shade my eyes, the glare was just... <laughs> I, I, I am permanently blind from this light, by the way. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, we've uh, we got a couple things to take care of toward the end of the show, but we're going to take a very quick break. We'll see you back here in just about a minute. At Adorama, our trained staff share your love of photography and can help you find what you're looking for. Our inventory is stocked with all types of cameras and accessories you need. Adorama has it all. Adorama, more than just a camera store. Visit us at 42 West 18th or at Adorama.com. Oh. Look, what are you doing, Pete? I, I'm can doing we shadow see, puppets on my face. Can we see? Woo, can we get a zoomed woo, in shot of Pete woo. here? Woo, woo. 
<laughs> Shadow puppets and dog. <laughs> woof, woof. Butterfly. <laughs> Oh, gosh. With sound effects and everything. <laughs> Dave, I, I saw you. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I saw you You were looking at something on your phone. You have an app, don't you? You have a, like I, a Photoshop-related app. It's actually, well, I have a couple, but this one I thought would be appropriate is the Photoshop quiz game since we're going to do our prize draw. And, you know, you just have to really leave a comment for a chance to win. Yeah. But some people like the good old days where we used to ask trivia, so I just was going through the app and going. And the funny thing is, of course, I wrote all these questions. There's like 600 of them. And every so often, like, I'm like, what geez, I don't remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> like this one right here. So we'll... Are we ready to do a prize? Because I can give them a question. Yeah, we're giving, away the, uh, we're giving away the Adobe Illustrator CS6 WoW book um, on our Photoshop show. But hey, if you want to learn Illustrator... Now, the way you win this is just go to uh, kelbytv.com and you'll leave a comment there. But just for fun, if you want, here's a question from the Photoshop quiz game. With the brush tool, what do you press to toggle on and off the airbrush option? And there's actually four choices. Backslash, Shift Option P or Shift Alt P, Forward Slash, or Option P or Alt P. One of those is the same as you clicking on the little airbrush option up in the options bar. Crap. So everyone with Photoshop <laughs> is gonna go and try it right I now. I have no clue, <laughs> and that bothers me. So that's just one of those things. You can find the game just for fun, and that's why people say, it's fun to play, but you might learn something along the way. Hey, cool. Kind of rhymed. It's All not right. that one. <laughs> so, and as Dave said, just go to kelbytv.com. I think we have a new little contest section up there. There's a little contest link at the very top of the page. Just click on that. You can click the show that you want to leave a, uh, an entry for, and that'll take care of it. All right, guys, we are done with another show. This was episode 319. And what? 20. 320.4. Three, 320 320 <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole code system. That's, this one really didn't yeah, even make it to 319 a 319 one. This is Juan, our jib operator, says episode 319. Juan, can you do a little jib action just so people can see you? We love Juan. Look see, at that. The, the guy that does that, that's Juan. And you don't understand, like, the. we're not supposed to look at the jib, but we are. <laughs> it's hard not to. <laughs> and there's Pete doing <laughs> shadow puppets again. So anyway, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to all of our sponsors, of course, uh, the NAPP, KelbyTraining.com, MPix, PeachPit.com, all those fine people for sponsoring the show. Pete, thank you. No problem. For shadow puppeting your way through <laughs> Listen, another episode. I feel tanner already. <laughs> <laughs> Corey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave? My thank pleasure. You. I just, I just feel like saying thank you to everybody. Guys, take care. Thanks again. We'll see you see next you next week. time.